Hi, I'm waiting for the plane uh, to go to Milan. I'm going to visit the uh, Quanta System headquarters and I'm going to learn about the, their laser, the laser we use in our, in our operating room, uh, how it works and look at the inside uh, of, of the laser and I hope we will learn a great deal. Hello, I'm Fernando Gomez Sancha uh, from the ICUA Clinical Central in Madrid, Spain, and I'm very excited to be in Milan at the Quanta System headquarters to uh, learn about uh, their lasers. And I hope uh, you will enjoy this uh, geeky review. This is the Cyber Holmium 150 watt laser, and it's used for HOLEP. And you know that HOLEP is uh, the acronym for Holmium uh, Laser Enucleation of the Prostate, which is the treatment uh, we love, and it's becoming the standard for the treatment of BPH. I started uh, using a green light laser for enucleation at the beginning, but I soon realized that uh, Holmium laser is probably the best tool for performing endoscopic enucleation of the prostate, and that is because uh, it helps you dissect the plane, at the same time produces hemostasis. There's very little mechanical effort you have to do to do enucleation, and uh, that's why it's my favorite technique. So as you know, anatomic endoscopic enucleation of the prostate is becoming the standard, and you can do it with different energy, energy sources. And Holmium, and especially the new generation Holmium, uh, is probably the best uh, tool because it has a unique particularity that allows you to open the plane, to dissect the plane, following the right plane, and it produces amazing hemostasis. The, the new Hol Holmium lasers have evolved to provide uh, us with a better tool, and I have to say, if I have to face a difficult case, a monster prostate, I feel much better equipped if I have uh, this machine with me. This laser has uh, very impressive uh, specifications, allowing to deliver 152 watts, 100 hertz, and it has a sophisticated uh, pulse modulation. It means that it can deliver two pulses very fast, uh, one after the other. This is what uh, we know as uh, virtual basket or double pulse or double bubble, as, as we say, that uh, increases the ability of the laser to cut and coagulate. So let's unfold this and I'm going to unleash the beast. This is the, the screen and uh, the laser comes with two keys. Uh, it's important to keep one safe just in case someone is funny enough to, you know, steal it. But this is the uh, starting switch. There it is. This is the noise uh, from the ventilator system that is activating, which will later on come down. So the laser is checking uh, the system, everything is checks okay, and we are ready to work. So there is a system that assists you to use this laser, and if you look at the first line, you have different options for lithotripsy, BPH, or soft tissue applications. But we have here Gregorio Catignoli, product manager of Quanta System, who is going to run us through the system. Yeah, sure. Well, actually, it's, it's very easy. So you see, you can pick from lithotripsy, BPH, and soft tissue, so pretty easy. Let's say that, well, you are a top expert of enucleation, so let's start with what I think you are more knowledgeable about. So here you can see you have a dedicated one for enucleation, one for delicate areas. If you want to ablate or vaporize, you have also a dedicated option and the coagulation settings. So the pedal has two, two, two uh, switches and exactly. uh, there's a third one on the top. Yeah. And you can uh, preset what's going to happen when you press one pedal and then the other pedal. Yeah, you know already the machine you have been using, so definitely that's how it works. So now, I don't know, it's not really your 
favorite one, but let's focus for a while on Little Tripsy. You see we have two options uh, for dusting with high frequency or with uh, vapor tunnel technology. You can pop corn and uh, finally you can also fragment that. You can give selection and just to conclude, we have also the soft tissues part, so for cutting tool or for ablation, you can select a dedicated one and finally also for coagulation of small bleeders. So this is, this is a, an assistance for people who are not very knowledgeable about yeah. laser physics, but if you want to, to set the laser according to your uh, needs, I mean, how, what is, how, how, how do you use this if you have more experience? Yeah, uh, definitely. So you can start with uh, setting the device in the settings you want to save, and then what you can do, you can go menu, presets, and then you can add the name of, the, of the your new name, reset. your colleague, which has less experience than you. So in a hospital, five surgeons with different preferences, you can have as many presets of, as you want. Exactly. Here we are uh, regulating wattage. So joules and hertz. Exactly. For the pedal. For the left one, exactly. Yes, this is uh, the setting you want, uh, the mode of emission, no? The, exactly. the pulse modulation emission mode. Exactly. The, the other element uh, is the pulse duration adjustment. So it goes from uh, short pulse to long pulse. Guys, if just really a quick reference. Uh, when, if you are not sure about short or long pulse, remember, just look at the base of the icon here. So you see here, Fernando, here yes. we have a, a very short base of the icon. So it means short pulse. On the other end, at the bottom, we have uh, a long pal we have a long icon the base uh, of the icon is very long which means uh, long pulse and if you choose one of these modes for example virtual basket mm -hmm. uh, okay you cannot choose uh, wide pulse or uh, short pulse it's that's, that's a good uh, observation because indeed uh, when the device is set in advanced pulse modulation Basically, what happens is that the device uh, is going to uh, regulate automatically and adjust uh, the duration of pulses, the splitting of energy, uh, automatically. Why should I use a shorter or a longer pulse? In, in lithotripsy, this is very important and you may not know that already. Um, let's look at this video from Quantalab, how the stone stability is affected by pulse duration. A short pulse results in less stability, as you can see, and it's uh, generally used for fragmentation purposes. For BPH, you can also choose between a short pulse and a long pulse. Uh, I like the short pulse because the blast is very strong and it opens the plane very nicely. But if you use a longer pulse, it's going to be more gentle in the dissection and more hemostatic but uh, you will lose some of the mechanical aggressiveness, which is nice in Holep to keep and develop the proper plane. So you can uh, find your balance uh, uh, in between those effects by tuning the pulse duration. Uh, of course, uh, if you use the advanced pulse modulation, I think you will not uh, need to worry about this because uh, pulse modulation is, in my opinion, the champion setting for Holep. Now it's opened, now it closes. So Greg, what's going on here? When I put my hand here, the connector opens and uh, when I take it out, it closes automatically. What's, what's this? Yeah, it's actually to protect uh, the connector part, the laser. Protect it from, from what? From dust uh, or any touching uh, by other operators in the uh, So dust, in dust in there is a bad idea. Yeah, yeah, definitely you want to protect and limit any access to this one when it is not operated and used. But now I have a fiber with me. So what happens is that once you connect the fiber in, so you see I'm approaching, it opens automatically. Now I screw the fiber and together we can see that the fiber will be recognized automatically. So you see now the system. I don't know, Fernando, if you can read. Yeah, no, yeah. Your, your favorite 550, fiber. this is my favorite fiber for, for Holep. And if I want to put my settings, I would need to choose the joules. In this case, it's uh, two joules, what I use. 
Otherwise, I would press up and down to, 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 to select less uh, power or, le or more. And then uh, the Hertz, I would go up to 50, which is my preferred setting, sorry. Okay, and so it went down because I was uh, accidentally going up with the Hertz, no? But exactly. So I have to go back and check two. And, that's, uh, and then if I press the magic wand, and choose virtual basket, which is the setting I, I love for Homium. Um, then I have my settings for the left pedal. Correct. And then uh, for coagulation, I would choose something in the region of, uh, uh, for example, 30 or 40 Hertz and one Joule. This would be correct. And then I would choose the bubble blast setting, which uh, produces a very soft and nice uh, spread of the energy for coagulation. And uh, we're all set. Okay, Gregorio, this is the pedal and it has uh, several components. This would be the cable yes. and I would like to tell everybody that the pedal is not hold like this. If you do this, it will break over time. Uh, you have to instruct your nurses to try to get the pedal uh, from any other part of the device rather than the cable. And we have two foot switches. It's a standard to use this for cutting, and dissection and this for coagulation. Correct. Can you can you can you switch if you have a preference? Uh, can you do any setting in either, either pedal? Yeah, they are independent, so you are completely free to assign a certain value or settings one another. So if you are if you are a little bit strange, you can choose to do it the other way around. And then there is another pedal. Many people don't know that the black one is a is a pedal, and if you press it, it will switch the state of the laser from standby to ready, except the first time. Yeah, that's correct. So th for the very first time that you want to move from standby to ready, you need to do actually on the screen. Then after that, you are completely free and you are independent to switch uh, by, by means of that one. So the sergeant doesn't have to say, set it, uh, turn it off or put it in standby. You can do it with your own foot. So and, uh, one question, what is this, uh, what is this window here? Try oh. to remove it. Sorry, I, I think I broke it, Greg. No, no, <laughs> don't worry, don't worry. It's just magnetic connection, so now you can, uh, as you see, you can reattach. Wow. Pretty easy. That's a relief. Lucky you. <laughs> okay, so what, is, what do we have in here? Here we have what we call the, the blush shield, so it's a, it's a protective element. You can try to unscrew that pretty, pretty easy, so you can rotate. Blast shield, what does, what does it do? So it's a shield against blasts indeed so basically here on top you have a lot of uh, expensive and pretty delicate elements and you want to protect any backscattering uh, any problem of transmission and you want to avoid any damage to these expensive parts. but what what uh, explain to us what is backscattering so in this case the problem what can happen is that either the fiber that you are connecting is already damaged so the transmission from the laser to the fiber and then to the patient is basically altered so what happens is that instead of moving from the inner of the laser outside there is a part of the radiation which stops there part of the light reflects forget, tries exactly. to go inside so not the correct uh, way not the correct movement and in this case this element is protecting uh, uh, the inside of the laser so it's absorbing so, so the potential this light damage allows this 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 crystal mm -hmm. inside the the blast shield allows the light to pass in this direction but not on the others on the other direction is that correct no actually potentially you can also plug it uh, also in the opposite uh, but what is important is that if this gets damaged uh, basically you are you have something which is not transparent anymore or which is not allowing proper flow through that uh, and this will uh, result uh, in uh, improper functioning you will hear actually Yes, it happened to me. I was operating and then I started hearing a noise, clack, 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 clack. Exactly. And uh, then we stopped and uh, it was a problem with the blast uh, shield. Uh, so to me, this is uh, like protection. If you're firing again and you wear glasses to avoid the, 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 the explosion to hit your face. Okay, so uh, let me show you. Uh, they have given me one of these uh, blast shields that was damaged. I don't know if you can see the the look of a damaged uh, blast shield. Yeah, indeed. So you see here you have some uh, spot, uh, some marks. Uh, in this case, once you arrive to this condition, uh, the transmission won't be any more efficient. So actually you will have uh, a growing damage uh, on this part. So the best way to do, if you hear this noise or if immediately if you see that the effect on the tissue 
or the stones is not anymore what you are expecting with respect to what you have set on the, on the system, the best way is to stop putting standby and check it. If it is uh, uh, like that, in this case, uh, simply you remove it and uh, even your nurse, pretty easy also uh, for this troubleshooting, they can replace it with a new one. You know, Greg, nurses are much more intelligent than doctors in general. Well, in theory, we know how a laser is produced. We have seen this picture where you can see a flash lamp and a solid crystal that will produce the, the laser. Uh, this is a laser chamber. This is where the magic happens. But uh, in order to explain it, I'm going to call Fabio Paleari. Hello, Fabio. Hello. Maybe you can tell us how this works. So this is a pumping chamber, a diffusive pumping chamber on the bottom connected to the electrical power supply. We have a flash lamp. So this is a famous and flash lamp. Okay, this is the flash lamp. So this how does it work? Uh, it is uh, a, a closed, uh, closed space, it's a, a closed file uh, in uh, quartz. And uh, there are two electrodes that uh, uh, make a spark. A spark, the so gas. there will be a spark going inside. And what is inside the, the, the chamber? The gas is xenon. Xenon, xenon, all right. So this will uh, flash many times? It will flash many times. Each time the current is flown, it will make a, a, a big flash. And it will uh, provide the energy to the laser crystal uh -huh. that is uh, this the laser rod, no, the laser. This is a solid state it's laser. Solid state laser. So the crystal is uh, in the shape of a rod. So this is a holmium crystal. This is a, a holmium Yag crystal. So this holmium is green. Green uh, is the part uh, that absorbs the light from the flash lamp. So, so this would be more or less positioned like it that. It would be like that uh, in a diffusive chamber. Mm -hmm. so that uh, even the light that goes uh, not directly in the road will we'll uh, go back and uh, circulate. Back. Uh -huh. So this, uh, this mechanism produces a lot of heat. That produces a lot of heat. That produces around one kilowatt of heat. And uh, the heat uh, will need uh, a lot of water to be removed. Okay, so you will irrigate inside this uh, from, chamber? In this laser, we will pump water from the bottom in pressure, mm -hmm. like uh, many liters per minute, and many liters per minute it's like a, a, a tap completely open. Completely open. That is pumped inside and sucked out, and uh, rod and flash lamp will be completely immersed uh, in this in this water, water to to get refrigerated. Okay, this is amazing. I didn't know this was green. This is a shock for me. How many uh, pumping chambers has this laser inside? Uh, this laser is the 150 watt, has four pumping chambers, uh, each one providing 35 watts. 35 watts, okay. So let's see how it works. The emission of holmium lasers is produced inside boxes called cavities that contain a flash lamp that transmits the energy to the laser rod, a holmium yak doped rod that excited by the lamp produces photons at a wavelength of 2.1 microns. Two mirrors, one fully reflective and one semi-reflective, allowing the recruitment of the number of photons necessary for the formation of the laser beam emitted out of the cavity and injected into the surgical optical fiber. In the video, the lamp is turned on, starting the photonic stimulation. The laser formation process needs a cooling system to avoid damage on the homium rod and cavity components. The photons bounce between the mirrors until the number recruited is sufficient to induce laser emission that occurs through the semi-transparent mirror. The laser beam is then injected into the optical fiber through a focusing lens. The power emission depends on the characteristic of pulse energy and repletion rate controlled by the interaction between the flash lamp and the doped rod crystal. In multi-cavity lasers like the high power homium system 60, 100 or 150 watts. The features of the single poles in terms of duration and energy are about the same as in single cavity lasers with 35 watts as maximum power. Instead, the maximum frequency emission at the maximum power output are multiples of the cavities included in the system. In the video, four cavities are entering in emission 
in an alternating sequence. Each laser beam is redirected to the focusing lens by a rotating mirror. If you select 100 Hz for the laser emission, this mirror will change its position 100 times per second with micrometric precision to ensure proper functioning of the laser system. Special sensors installed inside the optical bench constantly measure and monitor that the laser performances are stable and that the internal components are properly cooled by the chiller system to ensure the best performances and reliability for the doctor engaged in laser surgery. I'm using a special application in my phone to measure the amount of noise that uh, the laser is producing. So if I shout, ah, it goes up and if I remain silent, it's going to measure how much noise the laser produces. You can see it's extremely silent. We will have to try in the operating room as well. So here we are in my operating room and we're going to measure the noise in real life. It's quite silent. We have to record later when it's operating. So it has been an exciting day today at uh, Quanta System uh, headquarters. Uh, I have seen the production line and I have had a chance to discuss the technical aspects of the machine with uh, the guys who really created it and work on it every day. And uh, I have to say I'm very impressed and I think it's a, it's a very good device uh, for lithotripsy, for breaking stones and for BPH. And to me the main features that make it attractive are that you can use a reusable fiber that is quite silent in the operating room and I think that's uh, really important for, for us, for the surgeons. And of course it has a lot of benefits that uh, will impact the quality of life of your patients. So I hope you enjoyed the review. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you're interested in content like this and uh, see you soon. Thank you for your attention.